Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's talk about the new laptop that I purchased. That is the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. This is the uh, M1 uh, Pro edition that I have. And uh, I just don't want to make a regular video unboxing and stuff because you have seen all that. But in this video, if you can see, uh, I'll actually show you a lot of real world usage because I have a couple of Macs also. And what is the difference that I'm actually use, uh, noticing in real world, not synthetic and all that blah blah so first uh, i'll give you a very quick overview about this laptop what configuration i went and why did i go for this one uh, my current mac that i was using for video editing and some of the other macs that i have for example this is the macbook uh, air m1 and uh, this is my older macbook pro 15 inch yes this is the intel one that i had this is side, sort of a molasses and i feel this was the most rubbish for the price to performance ratio that I paid. Uh, in 2017, I paid two lakh three thousand for this one. Uh, so let's talk about that. I'll keep this box here. And then uh, we'll also look at some of the benchmarks. I have run a couple of benchmarks on all these laptops and even my iMac Pro. So I'll show you the real world performance difference. Also, I'm getting with video editing. In fact, I edited, uh, rendered the same video uh, on all this one. For example, uh, that was the unboxing of the Moto G82 that I posted. It was a 12 minute, 14 second video. So I re-rendered that video on all these Macs to give you an idea what is the real world performance because these days guys there's a lot of hype marketing and all this blah 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 going on and they give you like uh, results on the perfect uh, scenario but I'm just going to use it how I use it real in the real world and show you that and what are the things that I actually liked in fact I like some of the things that I was not expecting that I would like on this new MacBook Pro 16 inch and some of the uh, cons and dislikes and who's this actually for because I feel this is not for for all uh, majority of users I feel still would be better off with the new uh, MacBook Air or even this old MacBook Air M1 or even the M2 and uh, Apple has actually increased the pricing of the new MacBook Airs also and I'll talk about it why as you can see this is the laptop it won't even fit in my screen so and uh, we get this uh, new uh, what do you say uh, power connector MagSafe. So here, as you can see, this is the MagSafe port. Then we have two uh, Type-C ports. These are actually Thunderbolt uh, uh, ports for, and we also have a combo jack. So, uh, and the biggest improvement is that we do get a HDMI slot. But again, guys, I'm disappointed here because this HDMI is HDMI 2, not 2.1. So yes, it can do output at 4K, but only at 60 Hertz, not the 120 Hertz. Uh, then again, we have one more Thunderbolt port and a uh, what is a proper SD card slot. So in terms of ports, I'm actually liking uh, this one. But, uh, uh, and uh, let me give you an idea. Uh, what are the pre previous Macs that I had? As I've told you guys, this is the older MacBook Pro that I had. This is the 15 inch. This is this was uh, the 2017 model uh, that I have. Uh, and uh, this came with the touch bar. I think the touch bar was introduced on this one. As you can see, it works. Uh, fine and all those things it, uh, so this is the one that i had and this had the intel uh, uh what do you say core i7 it was a quad core processor with uh, eight threads and this was top of the line at that time this one actually also had a dedicated graphic card uh, on this one this was for two lakh three thousand uh, then uh, in 2017 i used this but i was simply not happy with this laptop because uh, yes uh, it worked but again the fans were so noisy all the time whenever you started doing any ha uh, what do you task heavy task or in rendering or anything the fan used to blast like a jet engine and stuff like that i used it for a year and i was not happy with the performance of this one in fact i was very disappointed with apple uh, and that's the reason uh, i actually opted for the imac uh, pro as you can see that's on my desk uh, and that's been my uh, what do you say desktop computer for all this time and most of the videos that i edit was with that one uh, it is it was a very powerful computer at that time in 2018 uh, i think so now it's almost four years since i've purchased it uh, it, it had a proper eight core xeon processor uh, with 16 threads and also had a dedicated graphic card eight gigabyte radeon graphic cards and again top of the line specs 32 gb of assist uh, what do you say uh, memory and uh, a dedicated graphic card had eight gigabytes if i remember and uh, it also had one terabyte of ssd 
then uh, I didn't have a portable computer because I was using this one and I felt this was too bulky uh, so when the MacBook Air came out I purchased this one and I love this one and I love this laptop again watch my review of this one and still after almost it's about one and a half two years since I purchased this one I still love this computer this one has to be one of the my best ultrabook purchase till date uh, and I still use this one and it handles everything I throw on this one so this is still working very very well but the thing is that uh, guys uh, video editing on this small screen this uh, it has a 13.3 inch screen and my eyes are getting weaker these days as you know so I was not enjoying the editing experience on this one because of the screen real estate and um, uh, if you guys uh, recall just recently just about a month ago I had upgraded to a new camera in fact I'm shooting from that one that is the Sony a7 IV and I thought of uh, taking advantage of all the features what it has in fact this camera can record 4k videos in 10 bit and 422 and that's how I'm actually recording in s log and uh, my iMac Pro used to handle everything prior to this one. In fact, I also have the A7 III, which uh, used to actually record in 8-bit color, not in 10-bit. And I had no problems with this one. But from the moment I started uh, editing with this camera, 8-bit uh, files were okay but in 10 bit 422 which is the maximum that this one has and i wanted to record in that the imac pro started to struggle a little bit in the timeline with this one uh, so because i'm now using s log and all these things it's more uh, it is strangely the macbook air is able to handle even this one but as i've told you uh, a little bit cramped for this one so my iMac the main uh, thing that I used to do on my iMac the heaviest task was video editing and now for that one with my workflow with the regular what do you say cameras with 4k I have the GH5 this one is the GH5 it handles everything but with this one it started to giving me issues so I thought of upgrading it and guys you might be surprised and I went with uh, this one the MacBook uh, Pro 16 simple reason for 16 is as I've told you the screen size I wanted big one uh, because uh, while video editing especially uh, you need a bigger screen the bigger is actually better guys so that 14.2 woods I knew simply would not cut it out though it's a lot lighter than this one this is seriously heavy laptop uh, so I opted for this one and I didn't want to offer a very high-end model and in fact if you'll be very very surprised that I opted for the base version that comes with just 512 gigabyte of SSD and you might be scratching your head Anandit are you nuts I'll tell you why I opted for this one in fact my iMac Pro actually what I purchased in 2018 has one terabyte of SSDs and SSDs were very very expensive at that time but uh, even on that one till now after four years I've just consumed 220 gigabytes of space the reason for that is that all uh, the heavy stuff that I have all the video files etc all reside on this SSD uh, so all my heavy files that are video files etc are always on the SSD I never use the internal storage for that so anyways there is no point if I even uh, buy this one with a two terabyte storage or whatever because all my video files will be uh, on this one because I keep moving between machines uh, because all the files are on this one maybe today I'm recording uh, doing the editing on this one but tomorrow I want to edit on the MacBook Air I don't have to do anything I will just take this and plug it in the MacBook Air and I can do the editing on Final Cut so storage was not a uh, requirement for me but I would say for most of the people who use internal storage you should opt for at least the one terabyte option and memory also the base variant comes with 16 gigabytes or luckily uh, the processor on this one the 16 gigabyte uh, the 16 inch variant is actually a uh, pretty good this one is also actually it is known as m1 pro and this comes with 10 core processor and 16 core gpu even if you go to the max the processor is the same it's a 10 core what do you say processor it's just the gpu that is the 16 core on this one goes up to 32 and i frankly did a lot of digging research for my kind of work that increase in processor simply did not justify the pricing increase that i had so that is the reason i opted for this one and the 512 gigabytes because of my peculiar needs i always use external ssd it works out to me okay now moving to the next thing i uh, and this is important uh, i ran a bunch of benchmarks uh, so that you can have an idea about these computers uh, so let's start with the cinebench r23 and guys you can you guys can also download these softwares and run it on your computers windows computers as well as back computers to get an idea how is the performance of your laptop so let's start uh, with the, the cinebench r23 that i ran
and guys as you can see from the chart uh, uh, i'm starting the top uh, chart uh, what is the bar graph is for the oldest um, that is the macbook pro 2017 then i have the imac pro then the macbook air and guys in the cinebench r23 uh, the higher the score and this is basically regarding the performance of the cpu specifically this is the performance of the cpu and as you can uh, see from the charts the older macbook pro 2017 one as expected did not perform that well at all in fact in single core uh, it got amazingly score of just 921 and on multi-core as you can see from the graph it was 3965 uh, moving uh, to the next one that is the iMac Pro uh, in the single core it did not perform hugely different from this one uh, it was 1000 points that I was getting but as it was a proper 8 core Xeon processor in the multi-core it definitely performed a lot lot better and got a massive uh, increase of 9633 and guys this is in 2018 this score is bonkers so at that try a time it was very very good now moving to the macbook uh, uh, air m1 and guys again this is the base variant that i have this comes uh, with 8 gigabytes of ram and has the original uh, m1 chip and this actually also got very very good scores in fact the single the threaded score is very very good 1492 Two. and uh, this is basically an 8 uh, core processor and as you can see we got a multi-core score of 6592 very respectable for the price of this laptop now moving to the latest one that is this macbook pro 16 uh, again in single core we got a score of 1529 and multi-core score a well, very healthy score of 12296 so this is cinebench r23 that uh, you can see and uh, uh, yes it is even beating the iMac Pro easily now and uh, but again uh, even uh, I was very surprised that the MacBook Air actually held up so well guys because recall if I recall my iMac Pro what I had purchased in 2018 was for, for four and a half lakhs okay now moving to another test that I uh, ran this is very popular this is again Geekbench 5 you guys also can download it and run on a computer let's look at the scores again guys if you notice the graphs uh, again uh, the blue area is for the single core performance and the green area is for multi-core performance again uh, we start with the oldest macbook uh, pro that i had and here we got uh, very average scores as you can see nothing that great uh, but now moving to the imac pro and the macbook air if you notice the graphs are very close to each other and i was very very surprised with this one uh, in fact uh, the imac pro uh, in fact in single threaded uh, operations uh, single core uh, did not perform that good and if you look at the graph, the iMac Pro, the single core score was not that great. But even the multi-core, if you notice, was just 8,276, which was actually not that far off from the uh, MacBook Air M1. And this cost, when I purchased, just 92,000 iMac Pro was four and a half lakhs uh, and of course the MacBook Pro 16 uh, the latest one the M1 Pro uh, is just going uh, crazy single core again not much of a difference from the MacBook Air M1 because indirectly the cores are almost a similar this has eight cores this has uh, 10 cores so multi-core obviously it's more optimized uh, and this has 16 gigabytes of RAM so this is getting a score of 12,456 so very interesting results as you can see and lastly and this uh, these are synthetic benchmarks guys so i also wanted to test how does it perform on uh, the regular task that i do the heaviest task that i do on my computers and that is video editing and i use final cut pro so i thought why not take my old project that i worked recently uh, for example the unboxing of this moto g82 it was a 12 minute 14 uh, second video uh, with two cameras uh, the same sony a uh, a74 with the 4k uh, 10 bit 422 and this top camera that uh, you're saying the gh4 so these two uh, and i uh, uh, rendered the what do you say this one with uh, the three laptops i i didn't bother to use this one because this one is too sluggish even in the timeline you can't do editing uh, with this one so this i just took it out uh, so we have the three laptops uh, that is the macbook air m1 uh, the uh, imac pro and this one and here are the results 
And guys, here note that lower the size of the graph is better because that means how quickly it is able to render out the final output file. And here I was actually very, very surprised. It's in seconds, guys, the gra uh, bar graph. But at the bottom, if you look, it's the actual time. And uh, if you look at it, uh, uh, the first uh, one, uh, the longest time uh, 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 that it took was for the iMac Pro. Surprisingly, that took 8 minutes, 26 seconds to render the file. Uh, and the fastest was the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And that was at 5 minutes, 37 seconds. So respectable, but not a huge margin. But the interesting thing for me personally was, uh, in fact, if we compare the rendering time from the MacBook Air M1 to this MacBook Pro 16, if you notice, not a huge difference. On paper, it should be a huge difference because this one actually, uh, I have the base variant that has a seven core GPU. This one, the bigger one, uh, we has a 16 core uh, GPU. And uh, this, what do you say? Uh, obviously, the CPU cores are also better. But if you notice, the real world difference was not that much of a difference. Uh, the MacBook Air completed in six minutes, 10 seconds, and this completed in five minutes, uh, 37 seconds. Sure, yes. Definitely, this is fastest, but if you look at it, not the big difference that I thought. Uh, I thought the difference between the MacBook Air and this one would be huge, but that was not the case. Uh, but again, in the timeline, when you edit the video, that is very important. It has to be very, very fluid. Of course, it was the fluid, like butter smooth. In fact, on this uh, MacBook uh, Pro 16, uh, uh, it was butter smooth. Very enjoyable uh, in terms of what do you say, scrubbing the timeline. Uh, on the even the MacBook Air, it was pretty decent. But sometimes I noticed a hiccups. Uh, and uh, on the iMac Pro, again, as I've told you, uh, I used to. Uh, I started seeing quite a bit of lag and whatever. Uh, when I started using this 4 to 2 10 bit video. So these uh, were the uh, results that I got. Now let's move to the next section. So guys, interruption from the future. I just realized this video is almost about 16 minutes long. And yes, I had already recorded the other parts. For example, what I liked about this laptop. What are the things that surprised me? What are the things that I disliked on this laptop? Um, the cons and all those things. And who's this laptop for? But again, that part of the video is another 12 minutes. So I'll post that in the next video. I'll call it part two. So I'll be ending this video uh, here. So again, stay tuned for, for, to the channel for the part two. I will be uploading that video very, very soon. And again, guys, thanks for watching. And if you guys are still not subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.